Hello, and welcome. I've been getting a lot of questions about family problems recently, and so I'm happy to share my experience and opinion because God knows I've had family problems. It's almost enough to drive you back to alcohol. Luckily, I'm on the smoothie train. Truly established. Hmm. So the support you have during your weight loss journey or your transition to veganism is important. Our most intimate and vulnerable relationships are with our family, so do not underestimate the impact that these relationships can have on your success or failure when you're trying to make a huge life change like this. Certainly you cannot blame them outright for your failure, but it's extremely important to be aware of how these relationships affect you, how these relationships have shaped how you feel about yourself, how you treat yourself, and they are capable of causing you a huge amount of emotional stress, and they're really capable of making you question yourself in a deep way. And this is the case with all families, but it's especially true of the families that we were born into. As what is considered normal in the family that you're born into, a lot of the times you don't even think to question that it could be somehow harmful or potentially unhealthy for your well-being. And it's difficult to reprogram yourself or even develop an accurate perception of the world if we've grown up in malfunctioning family systems. And it really pains me on like a deep and personal level that I even have to address this topic because members of our families, theoretically speaking, should support us the most and want the best for us. But more times than is even fair, they don't. So from my knowledge, my experience, and <laughs> what I've been told by other people, there seem to be three levels of family tension that results from veganism or some sort of huge lifestyle change. And all this information can definitely apply to friends as well. Level one is fairly benign. These family members are generally speaking kind-hearted and they're actually concerned with your well-being. They're just lacking the information to accept veganism as safe, healthy lifestyle. And in this situation, it's best to just kindly provide information. Because a plant-based diet based on whole plant foods is unfortunately the opposite of what most people are used to. So these family members will be happy to watch documentaries with you about the health and safety of vegan diets and the environmental impacts. And they might even have the balls required to watch the more traumatic documentaries like Earthlings or Meet Your Meat. Basically, these level one family members are open to logical, reasonable information, and they have the character necessary to accept and integrate this knowledge into their belief system. These are the awesome family members that you hear about who cook separate meals for their vegan kids, or make sure that their vegan family members have enough to eat from the grocery store. And who, once they understand that veganism is safe and healthy, they encourage and support their family member to do what's best for their health and happiness. Oftentimes, these types of individuals only need time, and sometimes it can be a significant amount of time. They just need a little support and positive role models to eventually make the switch to veganism or plant-based living themselves. So definitely be patient and kind with level one family members or friends. So level two is where it starts to get a little messy. These families just aren't open to the message you're trying to send them. They prefer their ignorance. They prefer if you just gave up all the vegan crazy crap too. These people will not watch your documentaries. They don't care about their high cholesterol because lest we forget, bacon though. And a lot of the time these family members have these beliefs for cultural or traditional reasons, but don't underestimate the power of pure apathy and habit. This is the level of your guilt tripping grandma who just doesn't understand why why you won't eat her Sunday pot roast. Or the father that heckles you for your decision to have a delicious black bean burger instead of a death patty with cheese. These are the family members that accidentally put butter and milk into the mashed potatoes or offer you cake with buttercream frosting for the 37,000th time. They tell you you're wasting away, that you're gonna get a protein deficiency, but they don't actually have any interest in learning facts about human protein needs. 
Often their objections to veganism aren't out of genuine concern for your health and well-being, but instead it's because it makes them uncomfortable, it's inconvenient, or on some level they're even jealous of your progress. And not only is this a level of great frustration, but it's also a level of really deep heartbreak. Because these are the family members that you're going to have to watch slowly eat themselves into early graves. You'll watch the diabetes get worse. You will be there for the first and second bypass surgeries. You will get the call after the cancer diagnosis where your family member will tell you, well, the doctor said that it's genetic. There was nothing I could have done. And you'll ask them time and time again, why didn't you just try the diet? It's so delicious. And they will swat you away. You love them, they love you, but they're just not interested. And sometimes, sometimes, these people will see you and be inspired, or they just get so sick of feeling like shit themselves that they eventually do slowly move into being level one people who might actually have the capacity to adopt dietary changes themselves. But my advice is not to count on it, not to hope for it, because the more you hope, the more you pressurize the situation. And the more the situation is pressurized, the more likely you are to blow up over Thanksgiving dinner, call everyone murderous assholes, and tell them that you can't wait until they get cancer. And then you're the asshole. Dealing with level two family, it's fatiguing. It's just tiring and pretty fucking irritating, because no matter how logical, patient, or kind you are, they just never change. It's your choice whether or not you want to continue socializing with this type of family. I know Christmas with your parents feels like a necessary tradition, and maybe it's fulfilling enough for you that it's totally worth it, but I personally prefer to celebrate my holidays without having to come face to ass with the crisped carcass of a tortured animal. I also moved to an island that is thousands of miles away from all of my family. It's not a coincidence. So it's up to you. No judgment. I'm not gonna say that you're a bad person because you have Christmas at your dad's house where they cook a ham. But there is something to be thankful for, because even though your family might be stuck on level two, at least you're not plagued with a level three family. Level three is ugly. Level three families do more than make fun of your black bean burger. They make fun of you. Not just your choices, but you as a person. They belittle you, they taunt you for your lifestyle, your appearance, your sensitivity. They might even try to trick you into eating meat or dairy. They make sideways comments in an attempt to put you down and erode your feeling of self-worth. They talk shit about you behind your back and they actively try to taint other people's opinions of you. And if that weren't enough, Level three assholes take pleasure in your struggles. Your slip-ups, your failures. They laugh at you. They tell you, I told you so, I knew that wasn't gonna work. Or if they're like my mom and sister, they have a really good laugh about how you look sick as shit. I think my sister even spent a year referring to me as the stupid fucking cunt. At least, that's the year I know about. So these people are mean. They hurt your feelings on purpose, and I'm gonna tell you the truth right now because the truth is liberating. They do this because as much as it might hurt you to believe it, these people don't love you. They don't care about you. Because these people are emotionally incapable of generating such feelings. They're not sociopaths. They've just been so hurt and broken over the course of their lives that they are no longer capable of real empathy or connection. They believe no one deserves kindness because they themselves were deprived. Or some other psychological coping mechanism that has left them in a constant state of victimhood, resentment, and hatefulness. And because of this, they are stuck in a vicious frenzy of malicious offense. And if you're going to be in a relationship with this type of person, Expect to be forever on the defensive, or to be sucked into their hateful game of who can belittle who more. I really cannot stress this enough. These are mean people. This type of behavior is emotionally abusive. You are not responsible, or even remotely capable, of helping them, changing them, or even connecting to them in a real way. There is no argument you can make, no matter how logical, correct, or innocent, 
that will wake these people up. And tragically, these people are really prone to an activity called crazy making, whereby through their manipulative and malicious behavior, they make you question your own perception of reality. If someone makes you feel like you're losing your mind, and then they try to use your craziness to prove their point, get the fuck away from that person. Seriously, reach out right now. Find a therapist, a school counselor, a trusted relative that you can use as a touchstone to reality and remove the crazy maker from your life as fast as possible. Additionally, level three people are not capable of respecting boundaries. And this is why healthy and safe relationships with these people is realistically impossible. Because it doesn't matter how strong or clear your boundaries are, they are incapable of respecting them. And FYI, if you have been raised by people like this, you probably have never been allowed to have boundaries. And if you did, they were probably violently violated almost immediately. You're going to have to learn and teach yourself what boundaries are and how to enforce them. Level three family members are always right. They demand your compliance, they demand your subservience, and if they don't get it, they create such a huge blowout that you're likely to find yourself apologizing for having breathed in so much of their oxygen. I don't like saying there's no hope for anyone, but these people are like rabid dogs. The only way to safely live with them is demonstrated an old yeller. That was a joke, kids. Do not shoot your parents. Now, you guys know I'm a decently strong woman, emotionally and physically, so I do not give this advice lightly. Run away. Run far, far away. And never, not even once, allow yourself to feel even so much as a pang of guilt for having saved yourself from a lifetime of emotional turmoil and grief. These people will never change. You will never gain their approval. They will never show you real kindness, but they will slowly suck out of you any goodness and optimism you have left. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your life on people who aren't capable of being good to you. Family is not everything. Blood is not thicker than water. Not if your family is abusive. I understand that when you're in this type of situation, it's really easy to feel super hopeless. So over the coming weeks, I would like to offer some more practical advice about how to deal with these types of situations. So if you guys are in this type of situation, please leave comments in the comments section below so I can be as specific as possible in trying to guide other people through this whole process. I know I've done it myself, but I don't just want to project my experience onto everyone else. Or if you have an awesome story about your super supportive family or your level one family that finally got on board, please leave this in the comment section too because I need to have some hope and live vicariously for you guys about what it's like to have a good family. I'm kidding. You get through it. Okay, you guys, there's a like and a subscribe button down there. Feel free to push those. Until next time, please make better choices for yourself and take really, really good care. There's no weed growing here. It's a lie. Everyone grows weed except me.